Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was at Ophrah, which belonged to Johash, the Abiz right. While his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of what? Stay, don't be distracted. The Lord is with you, you what? Now, this salutation is troubling because if you try to compare this verse with the first verse, it seems to be contradictory. If this is a mighty man of valor, why then is he hiding? If it is true that he, the Lord is with him, why does it seem that he is in a situation where it looks as if he is disadvantaged? Because if you go back to verse 11, go back to verse 11, the Bible says that he was threshing with in the wine press. First of all, you know that there are various uh, facilities for refining that are stated in the Bible. Right? If you're a student of the Bible, you know that there is the wine press. There is also what is called the threshing floor. So when Israel have vested items, if you're a student of the Bible, you will know that there were three major produce that were associated with the harvest in the Bible. What are those produce? You have oil, you have grain, and you have what? Wine. And each of these produce, when they are harvested in their raw state, they needed to be refined before they could be used. So when they brought oil, for instance, oil was taken to the oil press. The oil press is the place you call the place of crushing, where the olives are crushed. And then by the process of the crushing, then the oil is now produced. For wine, you had what was called what? A wine press. So what happened with wine is that when the grapes are harvested, you take it to a wine press, and then it is pressed, it is crushed, and then you now have your wine. Then when you had wheat or you had grain, you took it to where? The threshing floor. So already this indicates to you that there's an abnormality. How does one thresh wheat in a wine press? So even the facility where Gideon was attempting to take care of his harvest, was not the facility originally designed for wheat. Because to trash wheat, you don't need a basin. Because a wine press was like a basin where you put the grapes and then men used their feet to step upon it. A threshing floor, on the other hand, was an open space. If you've ever been to the north, you would have seen it done. You just put it there, then the grain is put there, and then they use the instrument of the wind to separate the grain from the chaff. But the reason Gideon was in a wine press, threshing with, was because the enemies of Israel had laid a siege on Israel. So he needed to hide, to harvest, or to refine his harvest. He was hiding. A man doesn't hide if he have, has enough strength to face his enemies. A man doesn't run to look for shelter to secure himself if he has enough confidence that he can conquer his enemies in battle. So Gideon was a hiding man. It was like he was a weak man. He didn't have answers to the challenges of his day. And the Bible is clear there that he was doing this thing in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. So when you now go to verse 12, and the angel now begins to say to him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. It seems to be a contradiction. 
And you know, when people begin to get towards the end of the year and they begin to review their lives, most of the time, their conclusions based on their measurement of their lives in a particular year is usually a contradiction. Many people come to the end of the year and they are thinking all the things that God told me in January. How come I have come to the end of 2023 and it looks as if God lied? There are young ladies probably in church tonight that are, it is beginning to dawn on them that 2023 is going to end up with them still being lonely. They will still not be married this year. There are young men in church tonight who it is beginning to dawn on them that 2023, all the things that they had hoped, all the things that they had expected, it's almost as if just the way they were full of hope in 2022, 2023 is coming to an end and it looks as if there's still no shift. How is it that God will give prophecies, God will give promises, and yet when the year is about to end, it looks as if the promises and the prophecies were lies. And in the midst of this, God is still coming to you in the middle of the night to say, my beloved son, how can you love me and my life is a contradiction? It's like that man that the Bible says that he was born crippled and yet he was sitting at the gate called beautiful. So if you were a, a passerby and you passed by the gate called beautiful, what you will see on the canvas of the earth is a contradiction. How can this be a beautiful gate with a crippled man? So the man's reality was like a negative pointer to the reality of the gate called beautiful. Every day they brought that man to the beautiful gate. I can imagine the things that went through his mind. This beautiful gate where people go in to fellowship, to worship and meet God. How come that this God who has a beautiful gate has not been able to make my life beautiful? So when you come to the end of the year, most people begin to measure their lives. December is usually a month of evaluation. Apart from evaluation, December is a month of undue pressure. I was talking to my mechanic while he was working on my car some days ago. He said, oh God, please now give me so, so, so and so money. You know, no matter how much the mechanic is charging you, he's cheating you, Shah. you know he's cheating you. Even when he tells you that, I, I swear to God, nah, nah, so I tell by him, he's cheating, he's cheating you. He has put, he's called a buffer, a buffer. He has put a buffer in the price. So when you are negotiating with him, it's that buffer that he's watching. When he gets to an acceptable point, he will now say, I know they go past here because he has already calculated how many cups of rice he needs to buy. For the one that is promiscuous, he has put the prostitute money inside. For the one that is careless, he has put alcohol money inside. The one that is a madman has put tramadol inside. So everything is in that buffer. So any attempt to puncture that buffer, you are, you are wagering his destiny. It's his destiny that is in the balance. So when the guy was saying, oh, guy, try for me, add another 2,000. I said, I'm not get. He said, now for children, Christmas clothes. I said, this period. <laughs> They see they buy Christmas clothes for this Tinubu Nigeria. Undue pressure. There are some of you in church now. The reason depression and sadness, a wind of, of unmet expectations has overwhelmed your soul is because you have suddenly entered into December. And then all of a sudden, your life is looking like a contradiction. And when the Lord began to put these matters on my heart, I began to ask him, so what do we do when there are contradictions? He said, you sing a song of a lament. That is the best time to raise a lamentation. My job tonight is to show you what a lamentation is. 
Because what you think a lamentation is, is not what it is. It's my job tonight. And I'm hoping that by the time I show you what a lament is, you will open up your heart and sing your own lament to the Lord tonight. That's what I'm hoping. Because if you just look at life carefully, you will find out that, listen, brethren, I need to talk to somebody tonight. I, 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 I'm hoping that it will not be Bible study. I'm hoping that my heart will be communicated to you. And the things that the Holy Spirit wants to say to you, I'm hoping that you will hear him. You know what? I'm just, I'm just coming from uh, four days. I've not been in my house, Calabar to Abuja. In the meeting in Abuja on Saturday morning, the Lord began to speak to me about a woman whose marriage was in crisis. And the minute I held the woman's hand, tears began to fall from my own eyes. I could literally feel the pain in her marriage, the pain. Listen, brethren, life is sorrowful. It's full of sorrow. Why is life, life sorrowful? Because you will notice if you study life, you will find out that in this life, bad things can happen to good people. Life is full of sorrow. Because the world is falling, because the world is broken, because of man's rebellion and man's sin, something terrible has gone wrong with the world. The consequence of that falling state and that broken state of the world is that sickness is now a natural consequence in the world. Pain is a natural consequence. Lack is a natural consequence. Tears is a natural consequence. You don't know. There are many grown men that weep. There are many young boys that are in church tonight and when they look to their right, to their left, to their back, to their front, they have, they have done everything right. They love God. They've tried to be faithful. They've obeyed him. But their life is a contradiction. Because that's the way life is. Life can be full of pain. Life can be difficult. Life can be hard. And yet, when life is full of sorrow, full of pain, full of, of difficulty, sickness, disease, lack, emptiness, the Lord will be standing somewhere and saying, I am with you. What kind, of, what kind of thing is this? How can you be with me and my life looks like this? How can you be calling me a mighty man of valor and yet my reality is that I, I'm, I'm, I'm afflicted with weakness and shame? How do you expect me to make sense of it? I do everything that I can. I've kept myself pure and holy. Yet the girls that are prostituting around are marrying every weekend. I am over 40. I'm getting to 45. And every time I hear you speak, you keep telling me you will marry. But Lord, another year is about to finish. It was this kind of thing that was going through the mind of Gideon that you now see his response in verse 13. Go to verse 13. Gideon said to him, Oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now, the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Gideon could not understand it. How can you be saying that the Lord is with me? If the Lord is with me, why is my life like this? If the Lord is with me, where are the miracles that I have read about in scripture? I have fasted, I have prayed, I have given sacrificial seed. The reason you are thinking that you are a failure 
or and you are not a success is basically because of what you have defined as failure or what you have defined as success. That you don't have money in your pocket does not mean you are a failure. That you eat only once a day does not mean you are poor. That you have only one shoe does not mean you are suffering. 